What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullshit. What's sad made of monsters and sports a bunch of leather-wearing fighters? Sure, the 1980s movie Mask did with Eric Stoltz, but so does Banner Saga, and in this case, Banner Saga 3, which culminates years of trudging through the world's most depressing lands and then taking turns smashing the shit out of each other with swords until someone, and most likely everyone, dies. No lie, this game is pretty much like Days of Our Lives. Instead of backstabbing humping and hotties, it's backstabbing scary-ass wizard chicks and a bunch of dudes trucking 40 miles in the snow in the same leather armor they wore for the last two games. Banner Saga is made by Stoic and tells a tale of the Dredge, an ancient race bent on the annihilation of pretty much everybody else in the world, and it's your job to walk left to right and occasionally kill people in turn-based fashion. Banner Saga 3 is out on the 26th and is out on pretty much every system imaginable, except the Vita, because, I mean, come on. Let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Banner Saga 3, a land where the Vikings would be wussies, Paxel level decision making, and a game world where even the bugs are hardcore. Graphics art first. As these games have continued to release, my admiration for the art style has actually continued to grow as well. It's an acquired taste, that's for sure, and not without a couple stumbling blocks, which I'm going to get to in a bit. But I just love that overall Don Bluth older character style. It does a great job solidifying a fiction in an incredibly dark and harsh world. I mean, if you look at these guys, they look like everyone in the game world just got back from a Christmas tree farm after having their faces whittled out of the newest batch. You certainly can't say it's not a unique look with thick lines and a flourish for almost selfie-like focus on some of the characters that does an excellent job making everyone feel heroic. Also, the small animations, and I do mean small in some of the talking scenes, do a good job drawing your attention away from the fact that almost nothing is moving in those particular moments. It's not perfect, but I like the look, and despite the dreary world, the color use is also fantastic. Now, one thing that's interesting about Banner Saga and always has been is it's never been the sharpest game. In fact, at 4K, it's got an almost filmic filter over everything. And while some may not like that, it gives a feeling of almost watching a movie when your best warrior who looks like Tim Curry from the movie Legend comes trottling along into battle and then hits someone so hard, there's a really good chance that if they live, Spelunker is going to be their new character class. And with most of the animations either hand-drawn or retroscoped, you get this incredible feeling of realism, especially when someone takes a fucking dirt nap right in the middle of a tense battle and is... They fall down, they sort of drop their weapon to their side. There's a feeling of weight there that doesn't exist in a lot of other games. However, the game does sit sort of in an odd place. For example, the cutscenes have a much more fluid look to them, an almost slick art style compared to the narrative scenes, and both look sharply different than the turn-based battle moments. And at times, it does feel a little bit disjointed. Now, that being said, taking your old crusty longsword and snicker-snacking through a bunch of enemies that look like Rob Zombie concert extras half metal clad machine, somewhat half humanoid underneath, never gets old, and the animations in battle, like I said, can be stunning. I did notice a number of small graphical issues, like when some chants that help your group are cast, it's done in sort of a freeze frame for everyone else, and many times this results in a crown of energy that should be over someone's head and is actually hovering well away from it. It can look a bit odd. Lastly, of course, we have to talk about the banner moments where you're trudging across the world trying to save it. As always, it is such a great look and it does call a bit of its namesake given the impression of this massive storytelling banner your troop of misery and bad tidings is traveling across. Now, performance-wise, it's about the same as Banner Saga 2, which means any current computer is going to be able to run it at pretty much whatever resolution up to 4K and most likely 60 FPS. There's not a ton going on here. But one of the real options here is the game issues having a plethora of graphics options by having none. Actually, that's a lie. It's got a button for full screen and windowed, and it does allow for dragging it to what size you want. And you can see in various video clips here in this review where that happens. But I would have loved for some more options to just adjust things. One more element when it comes to performance is this game noticeably loads a ton. It may load more than Banner Saga 2 did, and in some scenes it basically has a loading for loading screen where it loads two to three second. There's an animation that plays and then boom, it's loading again. Really could have been cleaned up and I wish it had been. Overall, this is Banner Saga 2, and 1 cleaned up a little bit. I like the way it looks, and it has really grown on me. But it does have a few technical issues that do drop it down a notch. Sound, music, and voice. When the sun suddenly stopped in the sky, calamity followed. Stone-armored dredge poured out of the north. A darkness bled across the land, and a world-devouring serpent carved chasms in search of something.
And you know what? Let's do voice first. There's barely any. And what is there is some occasional voiceovers, which are excellent, well done, and never scripted sounding. They have a sometimes children's book quality to the reading style. Like one of the massive horn dudes sat down on his lap and said, let old Grognar the Wise tell you a tale about how I lost an arm in battle and then somehow won an arm wrestling match the same day with the same arm. Sadly, most of the game doesn't have that, and there are times where the lack of moving and fluid animation coupled with the lack of voice can make it a little hard to understand if a moment is some elegant treatise on true friendship and maybe even love, or a one-liner about not giving a shit about your friends at all. I know I've said that before in the past. This is a more artistic than budgetary choice on their part, but I would have loved to have been given the option to listen to them or have them turned off in the options if people didn't like them. And that brings us to sound. Now, overall, I still have some of the same issues here that I had with the original. I like a lot of the sounds, like the atmospherics of the temples, towns, villages, and vast empty vistas, and the little things, like the swing of a latching chain that can be heard on a wagon when you're moving. The issue here is you still have odd combat sounds, like the axes. Every time someone gets hit by one, it sounds just odd. And while they're nice, thick sounds with a lot of detail and extra elements mixed in, they never really have the impact that they feel like they should. And they never really do sound like what you think an axe would sound like when it hits somebody. Whether these are real samples recorded from somebody smashing armor with an axe, I'm not quite sure. But it doesn't really have that audio pump that you would like. Though I have to say, one standout is some of the more organic enemies you fight with wet slurping sounds accompanying them waving eight tentacles at you. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but each time it does, it's both sickening and awesome at the same time. Overall, I'd say okay. And of course, that brings us to music. I always have to wonder, how is it Austin Winry pushes so much good goddamn music down the ear holes of gamers in almost every game, and in this game in particular, which is a dreary masterpiece, but isn't spoke of as often as I personally think it should be? It's incredible. It's heavy as hell, though, and anyone expecting almost any thunderous, rousing Conan riding his horse moments in the tracks need not apply. Because at some point you're playing, you realize this soundtrack needs its own 1-800 depression line, and not in a bad way, just in a unique one. It absolutely seeks out the best times to make itself present, like this rhythmic small string section that occurs in battles, but what sounds like a fairly simple element, you start to hear all kinds of deeper bits in it. For example, there's an almost far-off cymbal that makes the entire section sound very lonely. It's phenomenal stuff, and it shows a deft hand at making a soundtrack that still captures the fantasy feeling of the game's fiction, but at the same time, doesn't always partake of the same tropish music score you might expect. For example, in these soundtracks, Austin absolutely loves his brass sections, and you can definitely tell that, but there's a little bit of experimentation that seems to occur here that maybe didn't as much in the past games, and I like that spreading. There's some excellent pieces here. And of course, that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. If Banner Saga 1 was about fighting the darkness, and Banner Saga 2 showed you the darkness could exist even in your best friend's heart, Banner Saga 3 puts its head down and both figuratively and literally headbutts its way into total darkness. Things have gone from dire to just straight up dissolution as you try to lead alternating warbands across the known and unknown world, both in a bid to slowly stave off the destruction of humanity's last cities, but also find out just what in the hell is happening in the first place. Across all that, one of the things Banner Saga 3 and of course its predecessors do well is offer a subtle element of racism and classism to the title, but this also gets offered a unique viewpoint at times, whether it's when someone on your team starts saying something like, oh shit, the horseman didn't even realize eating someone was a bad thing, to comrades having a falling out and people saying what they truly mean versus what they pretend to mean. Excellent narrative throughout, even if it is a little hit and miss because, like I said before, the graphics, the animation, all that kind of stuff sometimes doesn't really let you know that it's a poignant moment. But of course, once you're done slapping your friends on the back, it's time to jump into turn-based battle. Battles are largely the same from the original two games, except now there's an addition of a timed wave style where you can battle through various waves of enemies getting reinforcements each time you kill them, but it's on a turn-based counter, which can end up counting out turns, and if you take too many, more creatures come. If you end up fighting through all the waves, you fight a powerful leader, and you get a special item. Now, each battle you enter, you can choose a starting lineup out of the 40-odd unique characters, and trust me, some of these guys, very unique. And the battle system continues to just be one that I really like. For example, that willpower system continues to excel here. It's, of course, coupled with the armor and overall hit point system of battle, meaning that every character has willpower points and uses them by adding them to whatever action they want to take. Attacks and special moves and even moving itself can be augmented on a one-for-one -one scale. So you can rush into battle, crank all your willpower into smashing through an enemy's armor so that weaker characters on the next turn might be able to kill them without any undue difficulty. Or if you want to hot-foot it across a frozen landscape, you can use your willpower to allow for your characters to move farther than they normally would. This is incredibly flexible, but it's also just complex enough to spur a little bit of strategy across the gamut of gameplay locations you will experience here, and there are more than the other titles. 
When it's time to hit an enemy, you have armor and their strength stat. With armor points, shirking off strength point damage. So you can choose to break down their armor, then kill them, or throw some points into willpower and do more strength damage to them and hope that you can take them out before they snuff the intelligence lights out of your resident magic user. Now, when you enter into battle, you choose from a particular number of starting locations on each side of the board and then begin a turn-based tit-for-tat fashion. Each character type has special moves they can do with willpower, like slashing through enemies to end up on the other side or insulting them to lower their attack abilities to giving yourself a 100% chance of hitting a bow and arrow shot from far off. Each one of the systems isn't fully unique on its own, but with them in combination and the environmental damages and train changes, as well as characters that have really unique abilities, the game's chess-like gameplay is pretty hard to deny. Also, while the horn still exists in some battles to give you willpower back to exhausted fighters, in other battles, a new Valka Spear has been added. This is a power that with each enemy death can unleash a bolt of power into your enemies to do some extra killing. Also, the game doesn't have you lose like most other titles. If you lose a fight, it most likely continue on, and depending on your difficulty, downed heroes are either instantly fine after a battle, hurt for a while, or hurt for a great deal of time. Now, regardless whether you win or lose, you get renown at the end of each battle and for talking to people and basically just walking around and leaving people behind sometimes. In fact, you simply always get renown for almost everything. And sometimes you'll lose it, but that's pretty good because apparently this world has not heard of money. So everything you buy is based on renown. You use it to level up characters, you use it to buy supplies and pretty much everything under the static sun of the world Stoic is built. Now, when it comes to leveling up, you have armor, strength, willpower, exertion, and break, with each having a couple particular skills attached to them, like puncture to cause enemies to slowly bleed to death or the ability to shirk off killing blows, which I'm telling you can be a goddamn godsend on the hardest difficulty, which I'll get to in a second. One thing to remember is that enemies are overall held to a number of the same caveats you are as well. Not all of them, but most. So knowing your own character skills and stats is as important as knowing theirs. Now, when not in battle, you walk left to right. Left to right. Yup, more left to right. Oh, okay, right to left right there. And you do have various decisions that crop up while you're doing that about how you can best lead your men to victory. Or in Banner Saga's case, a slower death than usual. Sometimes you're going to lose men as you split up warring bands because you don't want to worry about getting backstabbed. Other times you're going to gain men and morale by giving a rousing speech. Unfortunately, not all is perfect here. I had a number of bugs. One was a hardcore as hardcore bug could be. I rested one day and the game just lost its mind and kept removing fighters and warriors from my legion, even just sitting in menus or talking to people. It was hilarious, but it was not very fun. The other was not being able to continue after a particular tutorial popped up in a cutscene about halfway through the game. I did find a workaround, which was basically using a controller and just smashing the buttons. And it did seem to work, but it was an odd bug. I was assured that Stoic was on top of it and would have it fixed for the release. Overall, I'll say this. While Banner Saga 3 doesn't run out and change the entire world with its combat narrative or design, it does show a lot of heart and its gameplay chops are built on an utterly solid system. Fun factor. Yeah, I love my time with Banner Saga 3. Whatever difficulties I occasionally came upon in the battle, the system just sings and always had me thinking moves three or four or five deep with complex strategies not always working out on the battlefield, but many times their overall ideas did. But it is dire as hell. To put things in perspective, this is a game where adding fighters to your ragtag fugitive band can sometimes result in negative morale, like a bunch of people are just trudging along hoping they get their asses kicked all over the wintry wonderland versus getting more able fighters with them. That is why I like it, though. It's dire. It's sad. And the game has no problem taking that character you liked for a damn long time and then throwing him in a boat, lighting it on fire without a second's notice. It looks good. Its battles are robust. Its narrative unique. And its music is incredible. It doesn't, however, have the best sound. And the balancing on the hard difficulty seemed a bit off. But that didn't stop me from having the time of my life and maybe the time of a bunch of people's lives as they all ended up dying. Also, the fact that just like the other titles, you can pick to be one of two major characters and go through different stories with each one is always going to add a little bit to that length. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system with rent replacing Deep Deep Sale on PC. At this price, $29.99 on PC, you can pick up this title. You can also pick up a collector's edition. But I have to say, I just love the game's outlook. It's like the land hope forgot, then remembered it suddenly, returned back to yell, nah, nah, and then left again. I love that feeling. It's backed up by an incredibly solid battle system, and it's also got that split narrative, so you can play through it again with different things occurring and different choices you make. Really, really excellent title. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit or Twitter. And as always, you can become a patron on the Patreon website, which absolutely helps me continue to give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap, especially in this age of every video getting demonetized. 
Also, you can check out Twitch. I'm ACG on Twitch. I do a ton of streaming there as well. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.